Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the B-Link GTR7. This is a flagship class mini PC that has pretty much top of the line specifications that you can find. That includes an AMD Ryzen 7 processor, Radeon RX Vega 10 graphics, as well as 16 gigs of built-in RAM, Wi-Fi 6 support in addition to a built-in fingerprint scanner, as well as up to four different video output sources up to 4K resolution. Whereas most mini PCs focus on the budget segment and have components such as Intel Celeron processors that are just enough to scrape by for the most basic of tasks, this one here really is a contrast and provides a lot more power underneath the hood. B-Link also sells other configuration models of this mini PC, including a version that has a slightly less powerful Ryzen 5 processor that was released about five months ago. But this newest refresh with the Ryzen 7 is their flagship but in the same design shell as on the other models. And the Ryzen 7 series of their mini PCs start at around $700, so this is by no means a cheap computer, but in the grand scheme of things, if we're paying $1,000 or $2,000 for flagship smartphones, something like this, which has enough horsepower to do video editing, gaming, and be used as your main computer running on Windows 10 Pro Edition, I think it's still okay in the larger context, even though for a mini PC, that is definitely going to be expensive. There's also a separate caddy that you can use to plug in a more traditional SATA hard drive, 2.5 inch as well, if you want to further supplement the memory up to two TBs, along with built-in stereo microphones on here as well, so you can use services like Cortana without even plugging in any external mic. Presentation here is done very well as expected. We've got the unit right on top here. Underneath here, there's a logo that says GTR, as well as a standard array of quick user guides. There's also a heck of a lot of accessories included. So there's the standard AC adapter. Of course, I would always prefer USB type C, but perhaps this thing really requires more power to drive. So it is what it is. There is a full-size HDMI cable that you get as a bonus. And there's also another HDMI cable, which has a slightly longer cable length. We also get a thumb drive, 16 gigabytes, that has a recovery version of Windows 10, as well as all the drivers for the computer baked in if you ever want to reset or reinstall the operating system. This is a really nice extra that I've never seen before on any other mini PC. So again, really going after a premium presentation here. By default, the mini PC has a protective plastic wrapper just to prevent any damage during transit that we can just peel off. And underneath here, we have a pretty shiny overall finish, but the mini PC's body is constructed entirely 100% out of metal, has a very substantial weight and feels ultra premium. There's the company's logo along with the stickers that proudly stamped Ryzen 7 and Radeon graphics by AMD. And here is the integrated fingerprint scanner. I do really like the chamfered edges, which slightly glow across the surface. And then on the front here, we have an array of different ports, including the built-in microphones. There is a type C port, which also works for video output. 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port, two full-size USB 3.0 ports, power on and off switch. The side here features the ventilation ports for the fans, and on the very back here we have the additional ports, more fans for preventing overheating, the DC port here for power, we have two Ethernet ports, and then three other display ports. So two here are using full-size HDMIs and getting you up to four monitors that you can link up simultaneously if you wanted to. And finally, there's four more full-size USB type A ports that are all at USB 3.0 speeds. So again, this thing really is a beast in terms of I.O. You could plug in everything you can possibly want uh, on here and not really have any issues. Finally, on the back, this is what it looks like. Also says GTR. Soft touch rubber feet prevents it from sliding around on a surface. Also tells you how to enter the BIOS during the boot up by pressing F7. Overall though, for something so powerful, it's not too heavy or large, still very easy to put into say a backpack and carry around with you if you wanted to move it about. So we're talking about dimensions that are close to say a netbook back in the day or maybe a larger tablet. Due to the fast SSD, booting up the PC is pretty quick in 10 seconds to wake up from cold boot. And afterwards we can see that the power button here is also backlit and you can hear a little bit of the background noise uh, with the fan here on the lowest setting might be a bit more audible if we put it closer to the microphone here for a second and you can hear that's the amount of noise it makes. So due to the powerful internals, it's definitely not a silent or fanless mini PC. Sometimes it gets a little bit louder like this at the maximum loudness when it's doing more heavy tasks like video editing, for example, or if you're juggling between lots of applications. So at maximum, it generates about 40 decibels of white noise. It's not too disturbing. And in most cases where you're doing lighter tasks, it will still be very quiet. 
and then just a quick demo of unlocking it using the biometric fingerprint scanner on the front here. So we are getting a very clean version of Windows 10 Pro Edition installed with virtually no bloatware out of the box, aside from the essential utilities as well as Cortana built on in and the Microsoft Store. In terms of the default built-in memory, we get around 445 gigs remaining after the operating system has been installed. Although again, you can further supplement that using another hard drive that you can pop into the box. In terms of the system properties, we can verify that indeed it's using the AMD Ryzen 7 3750H and out of the 16 gigs of RAM, roughly 14 are really usable by the Windows operating system. It is worth mentioning that AMD powered mini PCs are still relatively scarce compared to their Intel counterparts, which have been just very popular for a few years now. But as these AMD Ryzen chips have gotten gradually more powerful, we've been seeing more demand for units that are installed with their chipsets. So it's great to have this option if uh, folks are looking for again, an AMD powered machine. Now in terms of the other system properties here, Radeon settings as part of the uh, Ryzen and Radeon built-in graphics that they're using. So there is an extra little tool here that you can use to further tweak and control things depending on what type of game that you're using. You can further push the GPU and performance to max it out, which is quite interesting. So there's some additional optimization that you can see here, as well as a, a place where you can see if there's any firmware updates available for the chipsets. Other profile settings for multimedia as well, depending on what type of content you're looking at. Display settings that you can find here, it will tell you what display you're currently using and whether it's able to max it out using the graphics card here, whether you want to enable super resolution, as well as some properties of the components that are being used here are reiterated on this tab. So if we wanted to talk about the performance in terms of benchmarks first, this particular chipset scores around 8,414 points on Passmark, which is relatively high for a mini PC. Just for reference, many of the really popular $200-ish mini PCs using the Intel Celeron N3450, which is super common, one of the most common chipsets you'll find in budget mini computers, has a score of under 2,000. So we're talking about a difference here of roughly four times higher and here's a comparison table with other chipsets, so we're sitting here at the moment. So even though this is the Ryzen 7 series, it's not the fastest processor from this line. So there is still the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, for example, that can further boost the performance, and there's another difference there between the two. However, performance here is still super competitive. Again, in terms of mini PCs, it's still one of the fastest and most fluid experiences that you'll find. Let's do a very quick web browsing test if we want to just visit some various sites like the Verge, we can load it up and everything just feels instantaneous and just super snappy, almost no delay as we're kind of scrolling between parts of the page. Even for complex sites with lots of ads and video elements, it still is just inky fast. Uh, the Wi-Fi reception strength is also excellent. That is, of course, thanks to the dual band as well as Wi-Fi 6 support. So you're pretty much getting the fastest reception speed, even if you're a little bit further away from the router. So you can open up 30 tabs, and I still didn't really have any problems when I was doing some shopping earlier, like Amazon, for instance, and still is loading along here just fine. No refreshing of any pages, even as we're going back and forth between these tabs. As far as watching back video and media is concerned, it's an excellent experience as well. It can handle anything in terms of streaming back video up to 4K resolution, no problems at all. Everything is buffering along super quickly, whether it's YouTube, it's Netflix, or even local files that you may have stored on the hard drive in a 4K resolution. It will still play back really quickly thanks to the fast internet connection. And so very smooth and responsive. It goes without saying that this computer can handle office work like spreadsheets, Excel, Word documents, PDFs without any problems, even longer files that maybe has hundreds of pages it can still open and read very quickly and also for making edits. So as we are able to kind of interact here with different elements and slides, you can see how everything is still very responsive even opening up other ones in the background here. Even with thousands of rows, as you can see here, larger documents can still open up really quickly and very fast to make edits as well. And even though the computer doesn't come with a free version of Microsoft Office out of the box, you get a trial of one month and you can also rely on their cloud online SharePoint editions, or of course there's alternatives like Google Docs as well as OpenOffice to consider. So whether it's for students to use for performing homework or for office work, 
uh, it really handles without any problems. Now in terms of other applications, of course, for coding, it also handles very nicely since we have plenty of power here. Jupyter Notebook, if you want to use Python, even SQL Server, anything you want to throw at it, again, it's able to pretty much handle on here as long as you are within the limits of the amount of memory that the computer has. In terms of other tasks like Photoshop, as well as for video editing, can of course also do since we do have slightly more high-end graphics compared to other mini PCs. So editing a 4K resolution video, it takes the same amount of minutes as the length of the video to process in my testing. So for example, if you have a five minute long 4k resolution video that you're trying to stitch together when you click on export it will take roughly five minutes to also finish processing and then to save to edit the same five minute video but only in full hd 1080p resolution it will finish processing in around half the time so roughly only two or three minutes for it to finish rendering that means this is again capable enough even to do video editing if you're a youtuber for creative work for again doing some photoshop work really, again, can handle all of those applications without any problem. Just like always, we can take advantage of the legacy operating system here and install any of the millions of applications you can find online. Any EXEs or executables, of course, can run and install on Windows OS. That makes it really versatile compared to, say, Android, for example. The Microsoft Store here does have a slight more emphasis on multimedia and gaming, so when it comes to this area, I would say the computer also can handle relatively well, especially off these lighter games that you see here, which require less demanding graphics, things like Minecraft, Roblox, in addition to some slightly heavier ones, but perhaps a few years older. But definitely, this is a machine that you can get some gaming done with. You can do, of course, any emulation that you would possibly want uh, from older consoles, and it will be just flawless on this machine. And for newer games that are requiring, again, more demanding power, it can still handle if you just slightly lower the settings and also boost up the performance of the components in here in terms of slightly overclocking things, tweaking it slightly, and you'll still get a pretty decent experience, such as CSGO, uh, such as Call of Duty. So these are all examples. And of course, in this era of cloud gaming, you can always just uh, kind of connect to more powerful computers over the cloud if you want to use services like Google Stadia or Microsoft's Xbox X Cloud, any of those services, you can of course even get added bonus performance from it. And uh, as long as you have a good internet connection, which this thing really does due to the Wi-Fi 6 and the great reception, you'll get a pretty fast experience. So that's another alternative if you don't want to necessarily install all the games directly on the computer itself. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the B-Link GR7 mini PC. Again, one of the most impressive mini PCs on the market when it comes to just really giving you lots of uh, powerful internals for still a relatively compact size that's easy to just hide away, tuck behind a monitor, even mount it behind the TV and it just kind of disappears from view. So if you're looking for one of the highest end mini PCs that money can buy at the moment, something that has significantly better performance and horsepower than the really budget mini PCs that we've seen previously, this can be a great alternative to consider but still in the same form factor. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the pretty impressive GR7 from B-Link.